Now, this could be biology or it could be culture. We gotta figure this out. We gotta figure out which one it is, right? How might this be culture? Media. So one is media, but like not even media. Uh, your buddy tells you that he's seen some girl, right? And what's the first question you ask him? Is she hot? <laughs> I mean, so it need not be media. It could be you know. So you know when you're out trying to find a mate. Uh, that sounds clinical. <laughs> what are you doing this evening? I am trying to find a mate. Right? You're trying to find a mate. You know that one of the questions you are going to be asked and judged on with this is, you know, and very and very high up the list. It's not like, you know, does she have a good job? Is she nice? Is she kind? Is she, you know, educated? It's, you know, we go, is she pretty, right? Uh, and what's female? What question do y'all get asked first? You're seeing some guy, you tell your friends. Does he have a job? Does he have a job? <laughs> <laughs> what? Is he nice? Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, so you so you can learn through socialization basically what traits are going to turn out to be important. All right, so he so he asks them to rate. So you got 18 traits. Then he asks them to rank them. So he, he gives them traits and he says, okay, rank these. So imagine I were to go. All right, I would, I'm going to give you nice job. Um, Attractive. No, these, are, these, are, these are all separate, separate things. Uh, nice job, attractive, education. And I would just go, nice job. I knew it was. Uh, right? And I just go, on this list, which is most important, and you go, well, what matters most to me is that they have a job, so that's one. You know, matters, you know, two. You know, whatever. Make your list. Right? All right, so this is what he did. 10,000 people, 33 cultures around the globe. Now, I have to tell you, David Buss, this is sort of odd, it's odd, and I hope he sees this video. Uh, he very often misinterprets his own study. And, and, and it's in a way that sort of deeply bothers me. David Buss, if you're watching this, uh, stop. Stop doing that, man. Stop doing it. Because then I have to <laughs> clarify what you found. So, I'm going to tell you what he actually found. First, all in all, males and females are not from different planets. Males are not from Mars, females are not from Venus, or any other planet. Males and females are very, very similar. And the first main finding is that culture, culture exerts a stronger and much more variable effect than sex. Culture is the biggest predictor. So we have Bateman arguing for this biology based. What Buss actually finds is that culture plays a massive role. The biggest predictor is culture. So what we have here is that males and females rank and rate characteristically, sorry, males and females rate and rank characteristics similarly important. It is not the case that males go, I just need someone pretty, and females go, I just need a wallet. That is not the case <laughs> at all. Both males and females also indicate by their reports that they put personality traits first. That's what they say. Whether or not that's actually what they do is a different story. Um, so males and females both rank things like kindness as important, the most important. Actually, the number one trait was mutual attraction. So, for what it's worth. But right after the right after the psychological traits, you get the physical ones. So, so you got personality. So both sexes, personality first, then looks. So both. Cross culture. So we, so what you can do is you can just average everyone together across every single culture and go what traits, you know. I'm going to, I'm going to show you the overall ranking here in a second. So, so in the overall, in the gross ranking, personality wins over uh, what people say they're looking for in a mate. So 
Um, this is what Buss has done. Buss did some follow-up analyses and found that, okay, the ratings for males and females are similar, and the rankings are similar, but there are relative differences. This, this word here you can tattoo to yourself, underline, highlight, bubble print, something. There are relative sex differences. They're not absolute. It's not male say, I don't care about anything except her looks. <coughs> Females don't say, I don't care anything about money. But there are going to be relative sex differences in the importance of some characteristics. So there are relative differences. So what we want to do is we want to look at the list. We want to go, well, what, what's this list? What are we, you know, what are we talking about? So this is what males and females say they're looking for in a mate. All right. So at the top of the list for both kind and understanding, intelligent, exciting personality, healthy, and then we start getting some mild differences. So what Buss emphasizes, what he's really made a cottage industry of, he says, okay, their rankings and ratings are very similar, but if you notice, there's a sex difference here that males rate attractiveness as relatively more important. Not top of the list, not number one, but as relatively more important. Mm -hmm. Bus does not tend to emphasize another difference that shows up just as strong, and that always makes me suspicious. It's like, okay... You know, if all you're interested in is the data, good housekeeping. Males tend to treat that as relatively more important. We don't like to say that. It sounds sexist. But if I'm interested in what males actually say, they rate this. Uh, females, relative to males, put good earning capacity higher than males do. Notice it's not top of the list. In fact, it's less than physical attractiveness. So... Bus, here's, here's what bothers me about how this has been in the literature. Bus says females rate good earning capacity relatively more important than males. Males rate physical attractiveness more. But it seems that this difference here is of importance too. The females actually say they care more about this than this. But Bus doesn't say that. And that kind of bothers me that he... He, he emphasizes the difference when it suits the uh, prediction, the Bateman-based prediction. Here's an interesting extra credit option. What if you gave people this survey happily, so you have to define them correctly, happily married couples <coughs> and asked them which traits were more the most important in their spouse? Would we get the same answer? No. That's an empirical question, right? Like, it's one thing for me to say, what I am looking for is a woman who is kind, understanding, intelligent, exciting personality, healthy, attractive, easy going, blah, blah, blah. But I'm happy, you know, if I'm happily married in this hypothetical world I've invented, is this the order that I would list? Oh. Or is this the order, if you were female, that you would list? It's an empirical question. So, because many people, many people focus on what people say they're looking for, but I think what's also important is to go, well, what things seem to actually matter? Like, does it really matter how attractive the person is if you hate them? Has that been done? Uh, maybe. I don't know. That's your extra credit. No, well, if you, if you would like, we can, we can work on a research experiment where you actually did it. But uh, first start to see if there's anybody done it already. Save me some time. <laughs> oh, it, it, you know, are, you, are you a slob? Do you make up after yourself? Yeah. Um, so, so remember my question about what's the best way to understand human males or females? Do we analyze them in the Bateman-esque prediction, or do we analyze them as culture first? Which is the best way, if I'm trying to understand human males and females, do I think of females as females first, or their culture first? So you would go with 
So, so if I'm trying, so we got to sort of think about how this plays out. If I wanted to predict your mating preferences, right? Like I'm going to enter various things into my equation. Uh, do I first want to go? What is your gender, right? Or do I first go? Well, what culture are they in? And then under that is gender. So your gender would come first, then I would put culture down here. Which? Wouldn't it culture first? Culture? Would it tend to make a difference? It is, well, it's going to make a major difference. When I'm thinking of you, do I, when I'm trying to predict your behavior in, the, in this domain, in the mating domain, should I go, she's female first, right? Or should I go, well, she is an American female living in 2013. Oh, okay. Or sorry, should I go? She's an American, not a female. She's an American living in 2013, early 20s. She probably, oh, sorry, whoever shares all of these traits. Then that you're female versus male. Okay. I mean, this is what we're going to do. I mean, surely if culture is the biggest predictor over sex, Shouldn't culture be the biggest predictor over species? I'm mean, sorry, shouldn't a species be the biggest predictor overall? Right? Isn't like we're all one species? <clears throat> shouldn't that be the biggest predictor? Shouldn't I first go, well, they're human, that's my biggest predictor. They live in this culture, that's my next. Then, male and female. Mm -hmm. I have to figure out what order to do this in. I will go ahead and tell you, this is a massive fight in, in, the, in the field. There are people who totally go, let's go gender first, and there are people who do culture first. We're not going to be able to. Yes? Well, um, even though like species does matter, cause, but we're born like similarly, like how like biologically we're born the same, but I think the difference is that animals, they don't adjust to culture because they just go with surroundings like trees and their environment, which is all over the world. But like for humans, we have reason, like we can think and like we adjust to stuff. That's our ability. Okay, so which one are you going to put first? So I think culture. Because okay, we're just going to put culture over we, gender. We change according to our surround, our people. And yeah. So, we, so you want to put you want to put culture. You go, okay, we're humans. And the culture seems the biggest biggest predictor. So knowing that you are a person living in this culture versus Sub-Saharan Africa or Kenya or South Sudan, that that's the biggest predictor. Then that you're female. You want that order? Mm -hmm. I, I like I understand the whole the culture and like that's what I would guess too. I think it's the thing that we could use though is like on the previous slide. That was a cross-cultural study. Yeah. And so how would you be able to differentiate the cultures if this is how it's working across cultures? Oh, so, oh, so, what, he, so what he did in, in, in his article, I can send you the article, um, he analyzed each culture separately, gave you a list for each culture, then Merged aggregated them all together. But each culture was different. Yeah, each culture, each culture showed differences. And that, that was his biggest thing, is that the biggest predictor was culture. Okay. Like culture was a much bigger predictor than sex. But doesn't it also make a difference like what time period? Well, that's yeah. included in the concept of culture. Yeah. <clears throat> so we would say now modern American culture versus 1950s American culture, or not, you know, fin de cell or turn of the century. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe I'm looking at it wrong, but even if you start with culture, whether you start with culture or gender, doesn't it, like, Inevitably, they do the same, right? Uh, no, actually, they would, they would give rise to two different predictions. Because what I might say is, because you're female, like that's the biggest prediction, because you're female, you are going to act in certain ways. So I might say, because you're female, <coughs> you qua female are going to be, uh, like, remember, like, we saw the dictatorship, the ovary, stuff like that? Okay. One thought was that females only needed uh, or only desire, actually the way they phrased it was, was females didn't desire sex, they only desired kids. 
So that was one argument being offered because it's like, as, as a female, that's what you want. Gotcha. Uh, versus if we go, well, our culture teaches what? In our culture, we teach, oh, everyone has this sex drive. Everyone needs this fulfillment. That's essential to what we're going to turn our attention to marriage here in a couple of lectures. But that's essential. We need to set up our marriage. Uh, if you're not sexually compatible, well, divorce. Th those are all our cultural ideas. Versus if it was gender, it would be... 